Pak Yuda for your information. We have uh, Dr. Sheikh Salim already on the line. Dr. Nasruddin Mat Isha on the line. Dr. Robin Rahadi. Uh, Dr. Al Tafur Rahman. And we have our Dr. Ras Wadirao on the line. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Pak Dr. Maswadi Rao. Let me open your microphone. Five of our panelists already here. All right. So, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Pa. Uh, all right, everybody. So, okay. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My uh, distinguished speakers, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, we have one minute left, so I think we are still able to wait for other. Uh, distinguished speakers as well, and also other uh, participants that um, uh, now I'm looking at some of our colleagues, they're not joining. And uh, thank you very much for the distinguished speakers that we have here right now at this moment. So do you do you hear me okay? We do, we do fine. Yeah. yeah, I do hear you, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Doctor Nasaruddin Mariza. Padatu, thank you for your coming, and Professor Shay Salim. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, and then Doctor Robin Nurhadi is also here. Thank you very much for being with us. And Doctor Ma much. is also. This meeting is being us. recorded. Uh, thank you very much, and we also have. Our uh, distinguished uh, speaker, Dr. Rahman, is also here. Thank you very much. And we also have uh, uh, Dr. Ma. Uh, yeah, yes. Dr. Ma is here. And then uh, Professor Maswadi Rao, thank you for being with us today. <coughs> yeah. And also, now this is, this is, uh, a moment when we need to look at one by one. And we also have Dr. Alta for Rahman. Yes, already here. All right. Okay, so it is already one <coughs> minute after uh, 1 p.m. Jakarta time. Uh, so let's start it. Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, it Mubarak, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Good afternoon in Jakarta time. And it must be very late in Dr. Uh, Ma time in Washington, D.C. Thank you for being with us in a very late uh, hours. Uh, this doing is panelists and dear audience, brothers and sisters. Uh, first of all, uh, let us thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us mercy and blessings so that we are able to uh, attend this international talk and inshallah be safe in this uh, very challenging COVID-19 pandemic situations. Uh, salawat and salam be with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace be upon him. Uh, my dear distinguished panelists, audience, brothers and sisters, my name is uh, Yuda Akbar Pali. And I'm an uh, international affairs and human rights lecturer at Universitas Nacional in Indonesia. And I will be serving as your moderator today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished panelists and brothers and sisters, uh, this is a very unique and uh, special uh, international talk because we will be hearing presentations from eight distinguished panelists coming from eight different countries on this very timely subject. 
it is about Palestine post ceasefire. Essentially, we are going to listen from the perspective of international response. So, but before we get started, I want to, uh, to take a few minutes of your time sharing with you why we are here uh, today in this virtual international <clears throat> talk. Well, distinguished speakers, dear audience, brothers and sisters, the most recent Israel and Hamas conflicts were set off on May 10 in part of Israeli police raids on the Al-Aqsa compound and clashes with Palestinians during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Israel and Hamas both claimed victory on Friday after their forces ended 11 days of fighting on the 21st of May. The United Nations claimed on Sunday, last Sunday, that 242 <coughs> Palestinians, including 66 children and 38 women, were killed in the conflict, and at least 129 of them were civilians. While the Israeli military claimed one Israeli soldier had been killed, as well as 12 civilians, including two children. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, United Nations also warned that the damage to Gaza would take years, years to rebuild. All the world leaders welcome an Egyptian mediated ceasefire between Israel and Hamas that came into force on last Friday, but it certainly underscored the need for a long-term political solutions to put a real end to the Middle East conflict. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, this is the aim actually of this international talk is to build a wave of political articulations from non-state actors uh, in order to provide a more substantive and enhanced peace after the ceasefire. This international talk initiative originated from a review of the latest situation in Palestine carried out by the Center for Research and Community Service of uh, Universitas Nacional, the Graduate School, led by Dr. Robin Nurhadi, who is also going to be one of our distinguished speakers today. Then Dr. Nurhadi invited Nassar Foundation of Malaysia to host the discussions. Uh, at a strategic level, ladies and gentlemen, today's discussion is expected to encourage the birth of a new cluster supported by non-state actors for the creations of a substantial Palestinian peaceful solutions provided enough space for state actors in finding peaceful solutions, but the results remain what we have seen today. The momentum of this CISIS fire should be benefited by non-state actors to create a new world order with the aim of creating independence for the state of Palestine. <coughs> well, today uh, in the next uh, 120 <laughs> anticipate that each speaker to focus on the shared team that is conveying the narratives and aspirations of the citizens of the country or regions or community where the speakers belong to. So we have some of our colleagues from uh, distinguished speakers from the Australia, from Thailand, from Indonesia, and we also have from Ukraine, from United States of America, we also have from Palestinians for sure. Uh, and also we have from India and also from Thailand as well. So with regard to the condition of the peace of population of this fire, so this is the one that we are going to look at. And ladies and gentlemen, in order to have a smooth and effective discussions, allow me also to share with you the ground rules of our talk today. So uh, the first, the working language of this discussion is English. And uh, as a moderator, I will manage the flow of the discussions with a predefined time frame. So each uh, panelist, each speaker will have a 10 minutes uh, of presentations of time. And then uh, there will be friendly reminder in the seventh and the nine minute. And after all the speakers uh, presenting, uh, the uh, question and answer session will be carried out for about 25 minutes. Now, uh, audience, our brothers and sisters, you may post concise questions in the chat box. So please go to the chat box for the questions. Uh, there will be questions will be picked up, three questions will be picked up and delivered to the speaker. Uh, my apologies that we are going to mute uh, uh, all of the speakers, uh, all the, sorry, all the, the mics that we have there except for the, for the speakers. And uh, that's why for the audience, if you may wish to provide questions uh, and give also your command, you can go to the chat box. <coughs> now this international talk is uh, expected to be conducted in the most 
possible respectful manner. And uh, for information discussion is also streamed uh, via YouTube. So and then we have the link there. So you could also have uh, <coughs> the stream in, in YouTube for your convenience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, dear panelists, and my brothers and sisters, uh, moving along to our sessions, uh, we're going to have uh, Professor Dr. Maswadi Rauf, uh, the director of the School of Graduate Studies of Universitas National in Indonesia, who will deliver our opening remarks of this international talk. So before proceeding, uh, Professor Rauf is a political science professor and former deputy on Indonesian Minister of Civil Service Program for 2002, 2004. He's also a board member of Journal Ilmu Politics since 1986. He obtained his doctoral degree from the Department of Political Science of Universitas Indonesia in 1981, and his master degree from Georgetown University, United States of America in 1975. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sister, please welcome uh, Professor Auf. Professor Auf, the time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Judah. A very good introduction to our meeting. Yeah. So, for me, the meeting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, speakers and participants. I would like to welcome you all to a discussion using internet facilities held by the Center for Research and Social Services, P3M, of the School of Regional Studies, the University of uh, UNAS, we call it UNAS, National University, ATS, UNAS, UNAS National, in a cooperation with the Nasser Foundation of Malaysia. Our discussion will talk about one of the most important issues in our time. The problem of Palestine, people in the Middle East. The issue has attracted attention throughout the world after the war between the Palestine and Israel, which lasted for 11 days, beginning May 10 and ended May 21st, 2021 when both sides achieve an agreement on this fire. I would also, I would also like to express my gratitude to the speakers in, in the discussion, which have been able to attend the discussion and present the opinion on the problem of the first time. There are eight speakers as mentioned by Mr. Yuda Elia. There are eight speakers who will speak in this event. I would like to address one of them. First, Dr. C. Salim Alwan Alusaini, Mufti of Australia. Hey, Salim is here already. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Salim. Second one is Dr. Sheikh Ahmad Tamim, Mufti of Ukraine. I haven't seen, I have not seen him yet. Uh, not yet. He is not here yet. Yeah. I met Mufti Tamim last March in, in Ukraine. I hope uh, Mr. Tamim will be joining us soon. The third one is Dato oh. Dr. Nasharuddin Matisa. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Chairman of Nasra Foundation in Malaysia. The fourth one is Dr. Sharif Samala, researcher, Gaza, first time. I haven't seen yet. Is Dr. Samala here already? Yes. Yes, here. Uh, Dr. Shamala, you may open your microphone. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Prof. I'm okay. here, inshallah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shamala. The fifth is Dr. Hayun Ma, a 
Associate Professor Rosberg State University Maryland. He is here. Dr. Hairma is here. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. And then number eight, number six is Dr. Sheikh Ahmad Al Tafur Rahman, School of Global Studies, Tamasat University, Thailand. Assalamualaikum. Al Tafur Rahman. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. And then Dr. Muhammad Salim Nadwi, General Secretary, the Indian Forum for Migration and Dialogue, India. Dr. Salim, is here? Ready? Uh, Dr. Salim, you may unmute your microphone, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Salim is already here. Okay, good. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Salim, you may unmute your microphone. Okay. And then the last one, but not least, Dr. Robin Nurhari is the, the, the host from Indonesian Council of Ulamas, but he's also one of the lecturers here at our School of Graduate Studies. Yes. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you very much. In this I would also thank Dr. Robin Nurhari and his team for their works in making every preparation needed for this. <clears throat> for the works they have done undoubtedly have resulted in the successful implementation of this meeting. Nasara Foundation of Malaysia has also played parts of the preparation of the meeting. <coughs> it also contributes to the success of the implementation of the meeting. They are all participants. Now I would like to make some comments on our topic. There have been many discussions held on the problems of the, of the Palestinians, even though there are not even though there are not many progresses made for the benefit of the Palestinians due to the stubbornness of the Israelis. We should not stop this discussions to discuss the problem in order to be able to contribute more solution of the conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis. The opinion expressed in many meetings, which offer a way is built upon by the conflicting sides, should be the main objective of the meeting, including the present meeting. The root of the problem is the occupation by the Israelis of the Palestinian lands. This was stated by the Indonesian Foreign Minister in her speech in the meeting of the General Assembly of the UN on May 20th, 2021, last week. The occupation has been implemented in the way of colonialization, characterized by discrimination, no respect to human rights, and using force, guns and firearms to achieve the objectives. The occupation has also been accompanied by the evictions of the, of the Palestinians from their lands and homes, which caused the resistance of the Palestinians. Another actions of the Israelis should be prevented by all Muslims in the world is the destruction <coughs> of Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The, the intention of the Israelis is vividly wrong runs counter to the opinions of the large majority of the nation in the world. One of the ideas that should be considered to make part of the old city of Jerusalem is an international treasury. The discussion should also touch upon the ways to unite all Palestinians in the efforts to form a Palestinian nation. It has been too long for the people of Palestine to suffer under the occupation of Israel. It is the time for many faction of the Palestinians to set aside all the differences and sit together as citizens of a nation, one nation. 
the suffering of the Palestinians people caused by the last war should be the last one. With the support of the large majority of the nation of the world, a peaceful agreement between the conflicting sides, hopefully, can be achieved this time. I hope that the discussion in this meeting will go smoothly and produces significant contribution not only to the study of problems of Palestine and the Middle East, but also to the solution of the Palestine-Israel conflict. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Rao, for the uh, for the excellent opening remarks that also highlights the kind introductions of the of the speakers, as well as the some important points that we would like to uh, elaborate more today. It's about the existence of Palestinian people and also uh, a call. The important part is a call of international Muslims or all the people or the Muslims in the world to. Uh, end of all to end the Israel violations against Palestinian people in Jerusalem and also in the land of Palestine. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished speakers and brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate today that we are going also to have a distinguished speaker that is uh, that, that was born in Gaza, Palestine, is going to be with us and also sharing some of the narratives, some of the thoughts, what exactly the feeling of Palestinian people right now in the past, and uh, of course, what is the expectation <coughs> after the after the uh, the ceasefire? So, uh, our first speaker is Dr. Sarif Amin Abu Shamala from Palestine. So, Dr. Samala is a CEO of Al Quds Foundations in Malaysia, and was born in 1984 in Gaza, Palestine. He obtained his PhD in Islamic Architecture History in University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur. And he published his first book in the Islamic history of Palestine in 2012 and contributed in Imam Ahmad Yasin Encyclopedia as a member of editing board. He's the editor of the complete work of Saeed Ibrahim Akatima, a Palestinian leader and a thinker, and focuses in his researches on the historical context of the development in architecture, especially at Al Quds in Jerusalem, uh, Masjid Al Aqsa, Dome of the Rock, and other landmarks. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome. Uh, Dr. Samala. Thank you, Akhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyidu al-Khalqi ajma'een. Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sadiq al-Ameen. Amma ba'd. First of all, Jazakumullah khayran. And thank you very much for having me today in this distinguished uh, Webinar. And also, I would like to extend uh, my thanks to the University National and Yayasan Nassar for organizing this uh, webinar. And I uh, extend the thanks to the panelists and everyone who is participating to this, uh, addressing the, the Palestinian issue in many aspects and uh, today we may be uh, focus on the political uh, aspect and inshallah ta'ala i'm going to to share with you some thoughts about the situation in palestine especially in the last uh, aggression a uh, last uh, uh, israeli aggression uh, but before i would like to hide uh, to highlight two things before i'm starting my speech and about post ceasefire. The first one, the uh, Palestinian community and the Palestinian geography after 1948. As you know, uh, in 1948, the Zionist gangs uh, established the state of Israel, which, uh, which was a result of uprooting the Palestinian people. And uh, after uh, a series of uh, massacres against the Palestinian people, demolishing their towns, their villages. And I'm one of the uh, sons of the refugees of 1948. So after 1948, the result uh, was the Palestinian people were uprooted from their land and their geography is de uh, demolished. And now we have many parts of the Palestinian people, even inside Palestine. So we have 
separately geographically inside Palestine, and we have Palestinian outside Palestine in communities. We have the Gaza Strip, we have the West Bank, and we have the eastern part of Jerusalem. We have uh, in these three areas are uh, Palestinians, and also we have Palestinians inside what we call uh, Arab 48, Arab of 1948, which they are uh, managed to, to keep themselves inside historical Palestine, which is now so-called Israel. And we have Palestinians in diaspora. So Israel tried to divide the Palestinian people before, uh, before continue, continuing their aggression against the Palestinian uh, historical uh, rights and the Palestinian human rights and the Palestinian uh, holy sites. This is the, the second point I want to highlight. Israel wanted, after dividing the Palestinian people, their geography and their humanity, they wanted to uh, to impose an idea and quotation and uh, equation that each group of the Palestinian in each land should take care of himself, not to other parts of the Palestinian. So they wanted to impose that when we attack Gaza, no one should uh, protest because this is different matter. When we attack uh, the West Bank, you are sh should not care. All right, so we have a... Al -Mubarak. So this round, it was different because the response come, came from Gaza as uh, which has considered itself part of Palestine and they want to, to, to fix the fact that any harm of any part of Palestine need a strong response from all parts of Palestine. Even we are divided geographically, but we are united as one nation, one people. <clears throat> so we find the reaction from the Israeli occupation is very aggressive, very huge. They uh, <clears throat> translated the reaction against the civilians. As uh, Mr. Moderator said, the number of shuhada was uh, very huge, more than two, 260 uh, shaheed. We have a big number of uh, children 68, we have big number of women, uh, 39, we have big number of uh, senior citizens, around 17. So Israel put all anger against the civilians, against the Palestinians, just to, to teach them a lesson that you shouldn't care in any part of Palestine, you should care uh, in yourself. But Alhamdulillah, in the other side, the Palestinian they didn't accept this idea, they didn't accept this aggression, and they was and they were very uh, very encouraged to defend Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak because in the mindset of the every Palestinian and all Palestinians that they are the real defend, defenders of Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak, and when they defend Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak or any neighborhood in Bayt al-Maqdis, such Sheikh Jarrah, they defend the whole Palestine on behalf of the Ummah, because the Palestinian people uh, always believe that they are in the front line on behalf of the Ummah, and any aggression against Masjid al-Aqsa should be uh, reacted. <coughs> to save the time, to save the time, post the ceasefire, post 11 days of Israeli war against the civilians, in Gaza resulted a huge damage, a huge damage in uh, residential <coughs> units, a huge damage in uh, uh, demolishing the facilities of the government facilities, schools, farms, mosques, uh, clinics, everything. The challenge, and the challenge now, how to rebuild Gaza, how to re the life to the Palestinian people uh, in Gaza without uh, bureaucratic uh, measures. It is uh, should be fast, should be uh, effective. From the next day <coughs> of the cease fire, the Palestinian people now, Alhamdulillah Taala, more believer in the 
uh, in the benefit of resistance and now they are around the resistance and they chanting for resistance in all over the parts of Palestine, even inside the so-called Israel, the Palestinian of 1948. The Dr. Palestinian people- Dr. Samala, you are coming to your eighth minute of presentations. Please okay. go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. The international community now uh, more understanding that uh, they should come and talk direct to the uh, the, the, the actors on, on the ground, such as the resistance uh, fact, uh, the resistance faction, especially like Hamas, and Hamas has legitimacy because it uh, it is already won the last election in Palestine in 2006, and it is nothing, no no meaning to to stop uh, talking with Hamas or to prevent themselves from talking uh, with Hamas with which is gone the uh, majority in the Palestinian people. And now uh, from this platform, I hope uh, the start, they started with the Muslim countries. Muslim countries should uh, provide a, a special and uh, serious talk with Hamas to, to reach to the best way to save the Palestinian issue. And I believe uh, Indonesia is one of the uh, strong countries that can interfere in this field and uh, have a good relationship with Hamas with, through We are losing your okay. voice. Yes, people. there's a problem, yeah. Uh, last, uh, so some last ideas <laughs> I want to share with you, brothers. The normalization, what happened in the last few days is a death certificate of normalization and it is uncovered the, uh, the normalization that when some countries went to normalization, they wanted and they said, we want to protect the Palestinian people through normalization. But the facts on the ground, nothing happened. They didn't protect the Palestinian the Israeli regime, the Zionist regime, they didn't respect any uh, country has a normalization uh, ties with the uh, Israeli. They continue their aggression against the Palestinian people. And Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, this uh, phase of the struggle of the Palestinian people was an, a clear announce of the death of deal of the century because the American itself, they started to uh, relation with the PA and the Palestinian, and yeah. they asked their uh, allies in the region to contact and to talk to Hamas to stop this uh, resistance against the Israeli occupation. Resistance in this time uh, had done a, a lot of uh, effective performance in the field, and this All may right. be, be based for a next a round of uh, liberation because the people right. in Palestine want they resist not just for resistance they resist as a main a, a main mean to reach the liberation of themself uh, their uh, their land and to liberate Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak. I want uh, finally share one of my experience that I'm Palestinian. I'm from Gaza. I didn't visit Masjid al-Aqsa since a long time because Israel prevent all Palestinians Fine. to visit al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. The Palestinians now, they try to liberate the, their land. They tried the negotiation for more than 28 years and the result is big zero and more confiscation of the land, right. more building of settlements. That's it uh, in short and thank right. you. Uh, very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Samala. Thank you very much. It's very insightful and also inspiring for us. So uh, it is very, it's always, it's, it's always um, uh, beneficial for us to listen from from you, from someone that it's uh, has, you know, has been growing <coughs> up in, in, in Gaza and Palestine, and 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 there are some important points also that you are noting not only the geographical demolition <coughs> by the Israel, but also, also the importance of protecting the Palestinian holy 
sites uh, and, and also the human rights for sure. But I think you've posed a very important question after the ceasefire, how, how we rebuilt Gaza. Now, this is a very important question. So I think we need, uh, probably we can discuss it here and probably this is gonna be the political articulations that we'd like to raise up for, for finding solutions, how we can, we can get uh, the Gaza rebuilt. So uh, thank you very much for your presentations. And uh, um, my apologies that I should also to remind you in the seven minutes and also the nine minutes of, of your presentations, this is also uh, going to be applied in all speakers because we, uh, we don't have a luxury time for, for, all, for all of the participants if it is uh, going further of the time. So uh, our second speaker, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters and uh, distinguished speakers is Professor Dr. Seh Salim Alwan Al Husseini from Australia. So, Professor uh, Dr. Salim uh, was born in Lebanon in Beirut in 1968. He is Mufti of Australia and Grand Chairman of Darul Fatwa Australia. So, Darul Fatwa is the High Islamic Council of Australia, which is one of the largest religious institutions in Australia and embodies many Muslim organizations, associations, mosques, imams, and Islamic offices of diverse linguistic and cultural backgrounds in various Australian states, including in the Arabic, Indonesian, Malaysians, Afghanistan, Pakistan, African, Ethiopian, Bosnian, Turkish, Bangladeshi, and many others. So, uh, Professor Dr. Salim Alwan uh, uh, would like to share with us in Arabic for seven minutes. And then for the remaining three minutes, uh, he will be kindly uh, also taking the summary in English. So Professor Salim, uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I prepare uh, some words in Arabic because uh, we have... Uh... Yes. Hello? Yes, 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 yeah. please, please. So we, so we have this on the screen, uh, Professor, yeah, okay. yes. Okay. Because uh, the Maghrib time, we prepare some Mag Maghrib time now. Oh, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum jami'an. Asaakum inshallah bi khair. Nashkur al-jami'a wa al-lajnat al-munazima li hada al-liqa. La nutilu alaikum. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalah. Asaru Allah ta'ala al-tawfiqa wa al-sadada wa al-ikhlas. أريد أن ألخص في هذا اللقاء القصير أهمية هذه الأمور التي نريد أن نتكلم بها أولا مكانة الأقصى عند المسلمين وماذا نفعل نحن المسلمون في بلاد الاغتراب تجاه هذه القضية المحقة العادلة بعد أن توقفت هذه الإجرامات والإرهاب البغيض من قبل أولئك المحتلين الغاصبين على أرضنا المحتلة على أرض الأقصى على أرض القدس لا بد لنا جميعا أن نكرر أن الأقصى له مكان عظيمة بين المسلمين وهذه المكانة لا تغيرها قرارات دول ولا تغيرها شعارات أمم هذه راسخة في نفوس المؤمنين إلى ما شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى وعسى إن شاء الله أن نرى النصر جميعا في حياتنا بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى الأقصى أرض القدس فلسطين مسر نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أرض الكثير من الأنبياء والمرسلين أرض الكثير من الصحابة الكرام ومن السلف الصالح ومن علماء هذه الأمة هذه الأرض التي عندما ناداها قطز فقال وا إسلاماه صار الذي حصل الذي حصل من أجلها محمود نور الدين زنكي قال أستحي من الله أن أتبسم وبيت المقدس في الأسر هذا صلاح الدين جزاه الله عنا خير الجزاء أعد عدته وحرر أرض الأقصى وقد نصره الله تعالى وفتح بيت المقدس من أجل الأقصى والقدس وفلسطين ضحى السلطان عبد الحميد بعرشه وملكه وقال لا أقدر أن أبيع ولو قدما واحدا من فلسطين من أجل فلسطين لازلنا جميعا 
نلتقي ونتعاون لنتذكر هذه البطولات من أمجادنا ومن تاريخ أمتنا لنقول جميعا بكل وضوح بكل صراحة ينبغي أن يكون كل واحد منا مثل صلاح الدين هل تريدون تحرير الأقصى؟ فعلوا كما فعل صلاح الدين الأيوبي رحمات الله تعالى عليه فليبدأ كل منا فيصلح نفسه ويصلح أسرته فبذلك المجتمع كله يكون في إصلاح والأمة كلها تكون في إصلاح إن شاء الله تعالى ولينصرن الله من ينصره إن الله لقوي عزيز صلاح الدين جمع القلوب أولا على العقيدة الحقة عقيدة أهل السنة والجماعة الحمد لله أنتم في أندونيسيا وماليزيا الجمهور الغالب هم أهل السنة والجماعة أشاعرة شافعية صلاح الدين هكذا كان أشعري العقيدة شافعي المذهب من عباد الله الصالحين يحفظ القرآن الكريم يحفظ كتاب التنبيه في الفقه الشافعي أمر المؤذنين أن يجهروا بهذه العقيدة على المنائر كل يوم في كل مسجد قبل أذان الصبح هذه العقيدة التي يقال لها العقيدة المرشدة مطبوعة موجودة في الأسواق معروفة فيها بيان أن الله تعالى الله أداة با تنبات الله أداة با أرى يعيد ويكرر هذه العقيدة على مسامع الناس حتى وحد القلوب ثم وحد السواعد والجهود ونصره الله سبحانه وتعالى أحبابنا الكرام أكيد الوقت هو قصير ولكن نحن في بلاد الاغتراب أحوج ما نحتاج إلى هذه اللقاءات لتعرف أبناءنا وتعرف هذا الجيل الجديد على أهمية القدس في نفوس المسلمين وأنه لا بد أن نسعى جميعا لتوحيد الصفوف توحيد القلوب وتوحيد القوالب لنتمكن بعون الله سبحانه وتعالى من هذا النصر المبين نحن في بلاد الاغتراب مع اهتمامنا بالجالية الإسلامية بشتى أصنافها نهتم بهذه الأمور التي تتعلق بتاريخ المسلمين الأقصى في قلوب المؤمنين الأقصى لن نتخلى عنه أبدا ما حيينا بإذن الله رب العالمين وهذا الظلم وهذا الغصب من قبل المحتلين سيأتي يوم إن شاء الله تعالى ويندحرون بعون الله عز وجل اتحادنا هو قوة لنا اجتماعنا على الحق على كتاب الله وسنة رسول الله هو من أكبر أسباب النصرة ومن أكبر أسباب الداعية إلى تحرير تلك الأراضي المقدسة أيها الإخوة والأخوات الأساتذة والدكاترة أرجو أن يكون هذا في بالنا جميعا إذا أردنا تحرير الأقصى علينا جميعا أن نتوحد قلبا وقالبا بنشر العقيدة الحقة بنشر الاعتدال بمحاربة التطرف ومحاربة الإرهاب البغير حتى نتمكن بعون الله عز وجل من النصر المبين أسأل الله تعالى أن يوفقنا وإياكم لكل خير وفقكم الله عز وجل رحم الله تعالى شهداءنا في الأقصى نصر الله تعالى أهالينا في الأقصى حماهم الله حفظهم الله عز وجل نصرهم الله هم وإخواننا وأهالينا في غزة وفي كل فلسطين المحتلة وفي سائر البلاد الإسلامية إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Professor Salim, would, uh, would be grateful if you could also take this summary of your uh, presentation in English. Subhanallah, I prepared some words in English, but uh, now I prepare to go to Iftar. Oh, and, uh, okay. For Salat al Maghrib. Oh, sure. I speak about the Aqsa. It is very important for all the Muslims in the world. And I said also, Subhanallah, in our uh, country, in Australia, uh, we teach our children about Al-Aqsa. Mm -hmm. We don't uh, forget the Aqsa. And also, I speak. I spoke about Salahuddin. Salahuddin 
he opened uh, Al-Aqsa by uh, to teach the creed of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, like the creed of Ahl al-Sunnah in Indonesia and in Malaysia. Right, I said right. uh, some words in uh, Bahasa Indonesia, Allah ada tampa tampa, Allah ada tampa ara, uh, sifat dua pulu, like this. Yeah. Salah al-Din beginning with this aqidah, and after that he and he went to Aqsa and alhamdulillah opened the Aqsa in uh, Jerusalem. I said this uh, for us in Australia and Europe and, and uh, America, it's very important to learn our children about this matter. To be not right. forget, inshallah. This is summary, inshallah. Barakallahu fikum wa sallamakumullah wa faqakumullah azza wa jal wa rahimallahu ta'ala ashuhada fi al-Aqsa wa fi Palestine wa fi Gaza khususa. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much for bringing up some very, very important issues. That is about how to ensure that our next generations understand what is the importance of Al-Aqsa and also Salahuddin that you mentioned. Thank you very much and hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and bless the, the people in Australia and also our children in Australia and all over the world. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Yeah, so I, I heard you you want to uh, pray uh, Maghrib okay. because now is Maghrib time there. Thank yes. you so much, uh, Sheikh. Thank you. Thank you sir. All right. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished speakers and brothers and sisters. So we have listened to what uh, Professor Salim uh, Alwin uh, uh, talking about, and it's very important parts. And I think uh, we are going also to listen from other narratives and other perspectives and even story from other part of the world. This is from Ukraine. So uh, our third speaker is Professor Dr. Seh Ahmed Tamim from Ukraine. But before I uh, inform you about him, about his profile, let me remind you that uh, if you have a questions, uh, because later we will have a question and answer sessions uh, after all the presentations from the speakers. But if you have a question now, so please post them in the chat box. And please also mention the speaker who wish who you wish to answer your questions. Uh, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Tamim is a mufti from Ukraine and president of Islamic University of Ukraine. He has a PhD in theology. In 1994, he was elected mufti of Ukraine at the first Congress of Muslims of Ukraine. <laughs> so he was one of the signatories of the Amman message. So Amman Message is a public statement by high-ranking Islamic scholars published in Amman on 9 November 2004 by King Abdullah II of Jordan and signed by more than 500 Islamic scholars and personalities. Now the message calls for tolerance and unity in, this, in Muslims' world and calls on them to leave extremism aside. So uh, Professor uh, Tamim, so the time is yours. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much to invite me. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 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 Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Maliki yawm al-deen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala man la nabiyya ba'da. Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyid al-Mursaleen. Amma ba'du. يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في سورة البقرة وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني داعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون فلله تعالى ملك السماوات والأرض خلق الملائكة الذين لا يعصون ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون وخلق الجن والإنس وجعلهم مخيرين تحت مشيئته مكلفين مأمورين بعباداته وإحقاق الحق وزهق الباطل فقال عز وجل وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون فكانت الدنيا لأداء العبادة وطاعة الله تعالى إرضاء له وكسبا للأجر على ذلك وكان الاستخلاف في الأرض لعمارتها واستثمار خيراتها بلا إفساد فهي دار للعمل والامتحان وغدا دار الحساب والبقاء قال تعالى 
هو أنشأكم من الأرض واستعمركم فيها وقد نهانا الله تبارك وتعالى عن الإفساد في كثير من الآيات القرآنية وعلى لسان كثير من الرسل الذين نهوا أقوامهم عن الإفساد كقوله تعالى ولا تعسوا في الأرض مفسدين ومن صور الإفساد في الأرض الكفر بالله تعالى كالتعطيل والشرك بالله وعبادة غير الله وكذا الاعتداء على نفس التي حرم الله بالقتل وسفك الدماء واغتصاب الأرض وسرقة الأموال وارتكاب سائر المحرمات أما التكليف والمسؤولية فمرجعها الرسالة السماوية التي جاء بها رسل الله مع سلامة العقل ووجوب الإيمان بما أنزل الله على رسوله وطاعته فيما أمر به فالله جل جلاله جعل الدين الذي رضيه لعباده واحدا كما ورد في القرآن الكريم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام وقال تعالى ومن يبتغ غير الإسلام دينا فلا يقبل منه وهو في الآخرة من الخاسرين وقال حبيبنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم الأنبياء إخوة لعلات دينهم واحد وأمهاتهم شتى وأنا أولى الناس بعيسى بن مريم ليس بيني وبينه نبي فالأرض أرض الله تعالى وخير البقاع المساجد وأولها بناء الكعبة وثانيها المسجد الأقصى الذي بارك الله حوله أما هذه الأرض فلسطين فهي أرض وطأها الأنبياء عبر العصور فمنهم من جاءها وسكن فيها ودفن في أرضها كإبراهيم عليه السلام ومنهم من ولد فيها ومات فيها كنبي الله يعقوب وإسحاق عليهما السلام ومنهم من ولد فيها وخرج منها كإسماعيل عليه السلام ومنهم من عاد إليها كيوسف وعيسى عليهما السلام ومنهم من زارها وكان آخرهم سيد ولد آدم وخير خلق الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من جمع الله له الأنبياء وصلى بهم إماما في المسجد الأقصى وكم من الحروب عبر التاريخ حصلت على هذه الأرض وكم من الأنبياء قتلوا عليها إنها فلسطين من أرض الشام التي بدعوته ثلاثا قال نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك لنا في شامنا إنها الأرض التي دعا لها نبينا بالبركة قائلا في شامنا هذه الشام شام المسلمين إنها أرض المحشر أما القدس فهي قلب الشام وإليها أسري بنبينا الكريم المرسل رحمة للعالمين ومنها كان معراجه إلى السماوات السبع صلى الله عليه وعلى إخوانه النبيين وسلم دار الزمان وحل ملوك على أرضها مكان آخرين واندثرت مدن وحضارات وظهرت غيرها وتغيرت الطباع والثقافات وتغيرت الأحوال فسجل التاريخ أيام العدل والسلم والأمان حيث كان للحكم بشرع الله حيث كان الحكم بشرع الله وكذا سجل أيام الظلم والفساد حين كان الجبروت والقهر وسفك الدماء فسبحان الذي يغير ولا يتغير إنه الله المنزه عن النقصان من الجسمية والحلول في مكان وهو الغني عن العباد وخالق الأجسام الكثيفة واللطيفة والأعراض كما قال جل جلاله ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وماذا نقول عن فلسطين اليوم؟ هي فترة من التاريخ خيمت فيها الظلمات وانتشر الفساد وعم في الأرض وقل الخير في المعمورة وصدق رسولنا الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي قال إذا فسد أهل الشام فقد تودع منكم وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام المتمسك بسنة عند فساد أمتي له أجب شهيد فالذي أقوله باختصار عن وقت إطلاق النار هل معنى ذلك توقف الظلم وسفك الدماء وحل الأمن والسلم والعدل هل معنى ذلك تحطم حائط العنصرية وتحرر المسجون وزال الاحتلال الغاشم هل تداعت الدول واجتمعت لنصرة المظلوم وإعادة حقه المقتصب وماذا ننتظر نتيجة ذلك هل هي المرة الأولى التي يجري فيها الاضطهاد والاحتلال والقصف العشوائي وسفك الدماء دماء الأطفال والشيوخ والنساء 
وكم من مرة كان فيها وقف إطلاق النار ولصالح من؟ هل نسينا ما حصل في مجا... من مجازرة المئة الماضية من التاريخ؟ وهل اجتمعت الدول حينها وسارعت في كل مرة لتقول كلمتها بوقف إطلاق النار وتحقيق الحكم بالعدل وإنهاء الصراع؟ الحقيقة المرة تتلخص بأن المحتل بنى حركته وأعد جنده لتحقيق عقيدة فاسدة وهي أن فلسطين أرض الميعاد وإنه يجمع النخبة من البشر على هذه الأرض على زعمه وكان وما زال يطمع كل مرة بالتوسع والاستيطان واقتطاع المزيد من الأراضي ليحقق حلمه من النيل إلى الفرات Professor Tami, so you have one minute left, please. إن الصهاينة ما زالوا يزرعون تلك العقيدة الفاسدة في قلوب الحمقى بزعمهم أنه متدينون ويأمرهم بدينهم بما يقومون به والحق يقال هو الكبر والطمع والجشع الذي توغل في قلوبهم ومع ذلك يظهرون المسكنة ويستجلبون عطف من في الماضي القريب اضطهدهم في البلاد التي سكنوها وكانوا معهم مواطنين فيها ونسوا المسلمين الذي كانوا في كل مرة يستقبلونهم ويسمحون لهم في العيش بينهم في أمن وسلام الذي نريده كمسلمين واتباع الأنبياء والمرسلين هو إحقاق الحق ونشر العدل كما تعلمنا كما علمنا نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وقام به عباد الله الصالحون عبر التاريخ من حكام ومحكومين وللمثال ليس للحصر نذكر عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه حين فتح القدس والسلطان صلاح الدين الأيوبي الأشعري الذي حرر فلسطين وبر الشام من الصليبيين والسلطان محمد الفاتح الماتريدي الذي فتح القسطنطينية وغيرهم الكثير ممن أحق الحق ونشر العدل وزهق الباطل هذه عقيدتنا ولا نخرج عنها وعلينا التمسك بنهج أهل السنة والجماعة من أشعرية وماتريدية بالقول والعمل والصبر عند المحن والشدائد ولا نحيد عن قول الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فلا عز لنا إلا بالإسلام كما قال سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه كنا أذلة فأعزنا الله بالإسلام فمن ابتغى العزة بغير الإسلام أدله الله وفي الختام يقول right. الله تعالى تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين right. وبارك الله لكم وفيكم ونصر right. الله إخواننا في فلسطين Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Tamim. So would you kindly summarize, uh, because most of our audience uh, are, are English-speaking audience, so would you please uh, just take one minute for the summary of what you have been presenting? Professor. I told that the land is that, uh, created by Allah, and uh, Allah Malik al-Mulk. Right. He sent the prophets. And all the prophets, they have one religion, that's Islam. Right. And the land of uh, the, the Palestine, that's the land of the prophets. Mm. <clears throat> From Adam alayhi salam to uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the same prophets come uh, from outside, like Ibrahim alayhi salam. And some uh, burn in uh, Palestine, like Ishaq and Yaqub alayhi salam. Right. And some come back to Palestine, like Yusuf alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi and uh, uh, Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to Masjid al-Aqsa right. and uh, uh, was the Imam for all the Prophets. And that's uh, the place where, where Isra and Mi'raj. Mm. And for us, uh, that's the, uh, right. uh, 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 through the history many times, Uh, sure. Some uh, come and go out, and the, the uh, post Caesar fire now, that's not the first time. And uh, many times, many people uh, killed uh, by the uh, Sohyonia. Right. And uh, now, that's, uh, I don't uh, understand, that's the last time. 
that uh, what about our brothers in Palestine? That will be the liberty and the, the istiklal, independence, or what? Mm. Why I, I remember uh, us about uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, and uh, Muhammad al-Fatih, and many others. We must study our Islam and be uh, joined all together around Ahl Sunnah right. wal Jama'a Aqidah, Ash'ariya Maturidiyah. That is the way to be, uh, insha'Allah, uh, in Palestine. Amen, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ahmed Hamim. Thank you very much, Sayyid for <laughs> your fabulous presentations and uh, le let me let me just take some uh, some of the important points that that palestine actually the the land of the prophets all the prophet thought islam and the, the land of prophet uh, the land of the prophets is palestine so that's why there is an important call that you made that yeah. we need to be collectively working together hand by hands to ensure uh, the independence and the protections of the Palestinian people and the state of Palestine. Thank you, Professor Tamim, for your uh, presentations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished panelists and uh, brothers and sisters. So uh, from the perspective of Ukraine, now we are coming to uh, uh, listen to one of the distinguished speakers that is uh, coming from the country uh, with the 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 largest with the largest muslim populations in the world and the third largest democracy so our fourth speaker is dr robi nurhadi from indonesia so uh, dr nurhadi is a philosophical uh, of doctor from center for historical political strategic studies of university kebangsaan malaysia and teaches at the department of international relations and master in political science, Universitas Nacional. So for more than a decade, his expertise has been widely applied in various government agencies, such as the parliament, the Senate, the ministry, the vice presidential office of Indonesia, as well as university, Islamic education institutions and Islamic organizations, such as the Indonesian Council of Ulama, or MUI and Nahdlatul Ulama and so on. So the former expert team for Minister of State Apparatus Empowerment and Bureaucratic Reform, and he was also a guest lecturer at the Department of Administrative Studies in Politics, the Faculty of Economics and Administrations of University of Malaya. So he has also conducted research in Southern Thailand on Islam, politics and security issue, as well as field studies in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Ukraine. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Nurhadi. Time's yours. Uh, thank you very much for the moderator. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. Uh, uh, thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you for a uh, time to talk. And uh, I want to uh, appreciate the case file, but uh, uh, we must not stop uh, there. Uh, I want to. Uh, talk about uh, a post case file and uh, I asked uh, the uh, title uh, free Palestine or, or death. The title of my presentation may sound radical but uh, rest assured that this is the softest uh, uh, choice to make sure every human life is so precious. Uh, I, I want to uh, show uh, for uh, idea, for uh, articulation, for uh, issue. Uh, the one is a Palestinian independent uh, keeping uh, people alive. Uh, this issue is more important. Uh, talking about uh, Palestinian independent, not talking about Palestinian not about uh, talking Palestine and uh, Arab and Islam. No, uh, a Palestinian independent is about keeping a people alive. Uh, I want to ask to everybody, uh, is it true that the Palestinian independent is only a matter of a time? Um, many, many, uh, uh, many experts talk about this. Uh, uh, the Palestinian independence is this about just just a time. I think no. 
the truth is the debt of the debt to continues is to increase uh, during this waiting period. Uh, uh, Samala, maybe uh, we hear that uh, uh, after a time uh, to the time, uh, many uh, many people will be picked up, uh, in waiting period. So, uh, Palestinian independence is the keyword to stop to stop the increasing number of victims who have died in Palestine and Israel. Uh, therefore, uh, as the people of Indonesia, we invite all citizens of the world to, uh, to acknowledge Palestinian independence, not tomorrow, but today. Uh, I, I want to show uh, uh, many uh, uh, support from many words uh, to Palestine. Uh, just for example, uh, the Gulf uh, Pool uh, said that the support uh, to uh, of the U.S. people for Palestine is increased uh, in in this year. Uh, this is also uh, increased from the last year, uh, from twenty three percent to thirty uh, percent. And the second issue is uh, about a political elite uh, egoism. Next, uh, next slide, please. The second is, I, I want to talk about please stop political elite egoism in the name of national interest. Uh, it is very important. Uh, my message is uh, to all uh, political elite, uh, uh, no important who is uh, elite or uh, what, uh, like uh, America or somebody. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk that you only need to be human to bring about peace, uh, especially in Palestine, Israel today. And one is uh, stop the uh, egoism of the political uh, elite in the world who are rapid in rhetoric of national interest. Uh, because we know the theory of realism with re reciprocal altruism that it does. Uh, the world today is too open to hide. Uh, it is a true intention. And uh, the citizens of the world are also very clever not to be fooled by selfish political rhetoric anymore. Uh, so please don't do lie. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the, the third is. Uh, the third issue is about uh, uh, forgot who was uh, what and who get what. This is a, a classic uh, issue. Yeah. But I want to uh, I want to uh, 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 I want to uh, we uh, think together. Uh, what countries with the United Nations organization actually know what to do to build Palestinian and uh, Israeli peace, but they do not know how to force for a moment uh, to stop thinking about whose position they are in the modern world system. <clears throat> uh, don't talk about uh, I want to be we must talk about uh, just a peace, only, only peace. Uh, state leaders who are involved uh, in the bed uh, on the Palestine-Israel issue are more interested in ensuring who get what or who become the core state and, and who the very, very state yeah, rather than using their power to uphold justice for Palestine and a good true peace for Palestine, Israel. And the last, um, the last slide please. We, we want to talk about uh, international field. Uh, we, we call 
on the citizen of the world to remind the human in saying every international conflict. Because it is only necessary as human being to ensure that a Palestinian Israel peace is realized. The most important element in country is the people. Uh, we know a government is also important, but the people is uh, more uh, important. So if the government of uh, various countries in the world do not want to recognize the true independence of Palestine, then we call on all the people, wherever their countries are, to give recognition to a sovereign Palestinian state with clear territories. And the last, this forum which was attended by activists, we call non-state actors, yeah. emphasis that the web of political articulation that support, to, that support the achievement of peace with sovereign Palestine will continue to rule. So uh, for all, uh, I want to uh, talk uh, the last. Uh, this is our moment uh, to make a web uh, a political articulation from non-state actors. Dr. We Nahali, say, uh, you have two don't. last minutes. Thank you. Okay, we, we don't just uh, talk uh, in this forum, but we must uh, 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 Amplifier, amplifying, capitalization, amplifying, and another. We don't stop there. We must uh, go until uh, <coughs> Palestine is uh, independent. The Palestinian independence is about uh, keeping a people alive. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Dr. Robin Rahadi, thank you very much for your presentations. I think you have brought uh, some important calls. So uh, you, you are posing a question. So is Palestinian uh, independence is about the time? Then you also uh, brought up uh, three calls that the first is uh, the Palestinian independence is the key uh, to stop or to end the violence in Palestine, and then please end the political elite egoisms or any facet interests in order to work collectively to get the international uh, appeal to establish the independence of the state of the Palestine. So thank you very much for your uh, remarkable uh, points and calls. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, after Indonesia, we're going also to have our Next speakers coming from Malaysia. So Indonesia, to my knowledge, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei Darussalam are, are three uh, countries that have uh, been supporting um, uh, independence of Palestinians for, for quite some time. But before proceeding to uh, Dr. Dato Isa, so I would like to remind all of the audience here, if you have any questions, uh, please post your question right now. It's okay. We will have a question and answer sessions at the end of the session later on. So please post your question in the chat box. Yeah, uh, And then don't forget to mention also the speaker that you wish to answer your questions. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is doing a speaker. So Dato Dr. Nasaruddin Mat Isa is the chairman of Nasar Foundations, one of the, the co-hosts of this event. Thank you very much. He was formerly a two-term member of the Malaysian Parliament from 1999 to 2004 and from 2008 to 2013. <coughs> In addition to prior lecturing stints at the International Islamic University of Malaysia and University Kebangsaan Malaysia respectively, he is also a former executive chairman and CEO of the Global Movement of Moderates Foundations. So among his notable works are between universal and cultural activity of human rights an Islamic and Malaysian perspective in 2016. He's also the author of Between Moderations and Extremism, was Atiya as a Peace Solution in 2013. So uh, Dr. Isa, uh, uh, you may proceed with your presentations. Thank you. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa wa ba'ad. For the Yuda and distinguished uh, speakers and um, participants of this webinar, 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, let us uh, thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for giving us this opportunity to gather from different corners of the world to discuss a very pertinent uh, topic, uh, a very hot topic, uh, a very urgent topic that need to be discussed and acted upon. And as mentioned earlier by uh, the the moderator of this webinar, that the purpose of this um, this uh, congregation this afternoon is to amplify the voices of the non-state actors. And I think this is what we need to do now um, uh, after seeing you know, the process of um, the struggle of the Palestinian people right from um, 1948, 67, and so on and so forth, until up to this day, uh, there were quite many efforts being conducted and being taken by state actors and, and, and the like. But, um, I think it is high time now for the non-state actors to amplify their voice, to come together and to bring up the voices in oneness because of the fact that, uh, for example, when we, talk about, when we talk about rebuilding Gaza, I would like to pose a question. What happened to the program of 2014 when there were so many pledges, when there were so many promises made uh, in 2014 you know, for, for states to, to put in monies and give contribution towards building Gaza. Nothing really, I mean, not much really happened after 2014, despite all the promises and the pledges. Uh, because of the dependency of too much towards the state actors. Because uh, what uh, Sheikh Tamim mentioned in this last part of the speech uh, just now, uh, I wish if that's, that part of the speech could be translated into English because he made a very uh, important point of questioning the ceasefire. Um, that is also what uh, my point will be in my presentation here is about you know, questioning about this ceasefire. Yes, there is a ceasefire, but it must, it must not mean a temporary halt from the ethnic cleansing or mass slaughter that has taken place to a resumption of Israel occupation, appetite, uh, appetite conditions that violates the basic rights of uh, Palestinian dignity, freedom, and search for peace and happiness. Because there is two different situations here between uh, what will happen uh, in Palestine for the Palestinian and the Israelis. When we talk about what will happen after ceasefire, the Palestinian will be gearing up day and night, morning and evening, working to rebuild their country, rebuild their nation, rebuild Gaza, rebuild their education system, rebuild their, their, their health system. Whereas Israel, after the ceasefire, the concentration is not about rebuilding, but they will take that opportunity during that ceasefire to strengthen their position, strengthen their armed forces, strengthen their iron domes, strengthen whatever that they have. In, in preparation, maybe when it comes next Ramadan, they will go for another attack. It is quite similar that the attacks in Gaza usually happens in Ramadan. So um, Ramadan is going to leave us in about two weeks' time. Just be prepared for next Ramadan, the attack might come again. So the efforts shouldn't um, uh, stop among the non-state actors for us to continue in, in trying uh, to, to, to develop uh, whatever that uh, we could do in, in, in helping our brothers uh, in Palestine, whether it be in the West Bank or in Gaza. And for purpose of this presentation, I would like to share four points uh, with the presenters and also the audience. Point number one is, uh, it might sound a little bit controversial, but I would like to post this point here. For, has a reflection for us, the Muslim. For me, this point number one is very important in order for us to move forward, to really contribute, not just rhetorically, but something practical. My point number one would be for the Muslim world to face the circle of violence with lesser rhetoric of Muslim unity. Please use less re religious-centric rhetoric because yes, it is about Masjid al-Aqsa, Yes, it is about the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the simple use of religious rhetoric has, wrong, has long been used in approaching the issue. 
and will continue to be used by the general masses. Now, let it be for it is complicated to simply change methods, perspective, ways of working. You know, let it be for the masses. But for us, those who are trying to garner the support of the, the civil society, garner the support of the non-state actor, garner the support of academician, to garner the support of artists, to garner the support of the media, let us go for a less religio-centric rhetoric. That is my point number one. Number two, I would like also to put a suggestion for this group of concerned people of the world, people who are in love of peace, people's, people who are, love, uh, who are in love with uh, coexistence, people who are in love with you know, um, uh, looking at history of the past of how um, Christian, Muslim, Jews were living together, the history in Spain, the history in many parts of the world has proven that you know, these three Abrahamic faith has left, have, have been living together, but because of different or because of political interests has, uh, has history developed. This is what we are seeing now in, 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 in Palestine. But despite that uh, fact, my point number two will be to put or putting in place a more nuances, substance and serious call for unity. Um, religious centricity aside, Muslim Ummah must seek to address the issue via rigorous use of multilateral diplomacy channels. Uh, some of the examples that I have uh, jotted down here is, number one is, for example, the application of the United Nations Security Council channels to exert pressure, though we know rightly of the challenges and results that is there in front of us uh, if we were to depend too much on the Security Council. But needless to say, effort should be continued by you know, every parties of the world, every parties of the, 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 the independent nation of the world to put pressure on Security Council uh, to have a, a, a more um, positive uh, response uh, towards what's happening in, 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 in the Palestine. And uh, with this, I would Dr. like Nazis to Nazis Rilisa, it's a friendly yeah. reminder that you are in the seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. go um, ahead, please. Uh, uh, we, go ahead. we applaud the, the joint statement made by Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei recently enforcing for the uh, urgent meeting of the Security Council. Um, the last point I would like to, 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 to um, share with the participant today is the concerted efforts in rebuilding Gaza. It should be a priority now. And uh, we feel very frustrated with what the promise that had been promised to Gaza in 2014. So of late, we could see more and more civil society, more and more NGOs, more and more even uh, personalities, uh, you know, taking their own effort into their own hands to help build Gaza. To me, uh, the priority in Gaza should be education. The priority in Gaza should be the health system. I've been to Gaza. Uh, I visited uh, Gaza right from north to south, though the visit might be a short one. But I could feel, you know, the hard working, the, the, the level of intellectuality, the level of, um, you know, seriousness uh, among our brothers in Gaza and also our sisters in, in Gaza. But they need to be, to be supported. They need help. They need uh, people to come in, not just with thoughts, ideas, and, and brains, but they need also materials in the form of money, in the form of, you know, uh, whatever that we could bring in to help them. So I do believe that with this uh, initial effort by Universitas Nacional, with a small help from uh, ES and Nassar here in Malaysia, we could try to formulate a kind of a formula, a kind of a, a joint effort, uh, at least among uh, people in this region. Uh, it is represented today by the speakers who are uh, attending this uh, webinar to come up with something much more practical and forget not uh, before I end my uh, presentation with that verse of Quran has a kind of a reminder for us when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in this book, Ya yuhal ladhina amanu lima ta'kuluna ma la ta'falun 
كبر مكة عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nasaruddin Issa, for your uh, excellent presentations. So I think you, you have been reminding us the importance of getting more practical works done rather than only the rhetorics. So you mentioned four important points, but one in all is the most important part is how we can do our concerted efforts to, re to rebuild Gaza. So no more rhetorics. So go to the real works. And this is also the time, as you mentioned, the time of non-state actors to take a part. So yeah. I hope that you hope also that this uh, talk will be uh, the start, the beginning of that kind Shall of call. Not. Thank Shall you very much, Dr. Nasaruddin Issa. So af after after our uh, we have been listening to the thoughts and ideas and narratives from our distinguished speaker from Malaysia. Now we are going to one of the one of the largest country in the world, uh, India. So our next speaker is coming from India. But before proceeding to our next speaker, uh, again, I would like to uh, ask your kindness or uh, the reminder also for the audience, if you wish to, uh, to provide any questions, so please go to the chat box and mention all to the speaker that you wish to answer your questions to. So uh, our sixth speaker is Dr. Muhammad Salem Nadwi from Hello. India. Hello. So, so Dr. Nadwi is the, C the CEO of Tabah Research Park in Kerala, uh, India. And he's also a general secretary of the India Forum for Moderations and Dialogue. Uh, all right. So uh, right now we're going to have uh, Dr. Nadwi. Dr. Nadwi, the time is yours. You may unmute your call. Microphone, Dr. Muhammad Salim Nadwi. Okay, still still on mute. Dr. Nadwi, please uh, kindly unmute. Okay, so so Dr. Nadwi has um, All right. a, a connection issue uh, here. Dr. Muhammad Salim Nadwi, you are online, please. We can hear your voice, but Dr. Muhammad Salim Nadwi. The time is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dr. Moderator. Dr. Nadwi. Akbar Pillai. Dr. Nadwi. Ahmad Isa. All right, so we have a connection issue here. Eminent personalities. Yes. Yes. What's the name? I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. I am very happy with you. In this important issue, regarding the Palestinian issue, the title is in the greatest, the Palestinian Issue is not a region issue or particle. It is a major global sensational issue. Since Al Aqsa Mosque is a holy place for all Muslims all over the world, and the religion sometimes. The religion sentiments with it. The city, the city of Al Qudus is given for three major religions of the world. To Israel has no authority to change the demography of 
again. Go ahead, Dr. Muhammad Salim Nadwi. Okay, okay. It is needless to say that the both sides are must try to join the develop dialogue and mutual talk. And faith leaders can, can be forced to diplomatic process by using their influence to end the conflict, by promoting humanity, by sharing human values, global ideas, and by avoiding support the terrorism. Today, it is hard to deny Israel is a terrorist state. Palestinians living under Israeli control including those hold Israeli passports, don't enjoy full citizenship. They don't have a full freedom of movement. There are the mystic <coughs> pleas that it is not a state for all. Citizens are residents, but the national state of the Jewish people, the Israel wants to rule over entire historic Palestine. And Israel expanding it is existing illegal settlements in the Palestine. Also, Israel has been defying international law and violating the most basic rights of Palestinian people since 1948. Then all Palestinians, Palestinian refugees will have the right to return their home dance. As for citizens, the state will grant equal citizenship to refugees regardless race, gender, and religion. They have right at their lives free, freely, peacefully, and with dignity. In context, the message for the whole world, for the whole world, what is happening in oneness, through the words. Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Salim Nadwi, thank you very much for your presentations. Uh, uh, it's apologies that we we have uh, some connection problem, but I think uh, I do have some some quotes from your presentation. So thank you very much for posing the the uh, uh, narrative that 
Palestinian issue is a global issue. This is not a Middle Eastern issue. It is a global issue. So that is why uh, Dr. Nadwi emphasis on the importance of the mutual dialogue uh, and, and, and expand our influence in order to reach that kind of dialogue. Uh, and, and the last point that he raised is very important one is also about the, the fate of the refugees, of the Palestinian refugees, that uh, I think the world also to recognize their rights uh, especially the citizens of pride. So I think it's very, very good points. Thank you very much, Dr. Nadvi, for your presentations. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after India, we are going to go to the United States of America. So this is very, very important uh, because uh, I think besides Egypt, uh, what literature that I have been uh, reading is about how United States under the President Biden uh, is also playing a background uh, back. Uh, policy or green room a kind of uh, 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 approach to support uh, the the uh, the ceasefires uh, to take part. So uh, we have our uh, speaker, the seventh speaker, Dr. Hyun Ma from United States of America. So Dr. Ma is associate professor of Frostbrook State University's Department of History. He is also the president of Zenghi Forum that focuses on China Muslim world relations. Now his scholarly work examines the history of Islam in China as well as China's relations with the Islamic world. His article reviews and opinions have appeared in Foreign Policy, Let Imperial China, Current Trend in Islamist Ideology, Journal of Muslim Minority Affairs, American Journal of Islamic Social Science, Chinese Brief, and many others. Uh, Dr. Ma has also been quoted for or interviewed by, uh, uh, among others, by the New York Times, BBC, The Nation, Associated Press, and The Independent. So Dr. Ma, the time is yours, please. Uh, I think you are still Dr. on mute. Dr. Ma, would you please uh, uh, unmute your Dr. mic? Dr. Ma, you may unmute your microphone, okay. please. All right. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Can please. you hear me, Doctor Phyllis? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. This is clear. Very clear. Please, please, Doctor. All right. Thank you very much. And assalamu alaikum. No, I think I'm and I'm really Salaam. happy to be here to, uh, to join with this event on the current issue of Palestine. And of course, actually, uh, in this week and actually last week, uh, we had uh, several meetings. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Oh, okay, great. Okay, let me just go straight to the topic. Uh, when we talk about Palestine, we talk about Israel, we really look at the Palestinian Israeli relations. So, first, I'll go over the relationship between Palestinians and first Jews. Uh, the reason why I said Jews are uh, simply, of course, uh, before 1948. We can only see the conflict in Palestine actually is between Palestinians and the Jewish population. Because at this time, you really have imperialism, the Great Britain in Palestine to control the Palestinian territory. So that's why you have divide and rule strategy to use Jewish population uh, to control Palestinian territory against the Ottomans, against the neighbor country. But after 1948, I would say we began to talk about uh, colonialism and anti-colonialism are uh, simply because from 1948, you have a state of Israel. So that's why after 1948, I would say, we really talk about Israeli colonialism. We talk about anti-colonialism. We talk about invasions. We talk about occupations. We talk about expansion. So that's mm -hmm. very important. At this time, when we look at so-called international responses, and of course, here when we talk about international responses, we are really talk about non-Muslim, non-Arab countries' responses. But of course, if you remember the anti-colonial movement in 1950 to 1960s, I would say basically by 1960s, most countries, now from Africa to Asia, all achieved independence. And of course, Palestine should achieve independence too, as other countries did. But however, remember at this time, you not only have Cold War, but actually you have Arab-Israeli war. Now, what does it mean? It means from this time, we began to see the international attentions and the narratives on Palestine began to shift from 
anti-colonialism basically to religions, ethnicities. We began to talk about Palestinian Israeli conflict. We began to talk about Muslims Jews conflict. So that's why at this time I said international responses did not really exist, if you will. And also when we look at Arab and Muslim countries' responses, it's also very mixed. And what does it mean? It means if you look at from 1948 to 1950 to 1967, especially, uh, we have individuals, organizations, uh, religious, tribal, national responses from different uh, sectors. You have Mujahideen, you have a resistant movement, you have some Arab you know, support for Palestinian people, right? So this is why I said at this time, we began to see religions as necessity began to replace colonialism and <coughs> anti-colonialism. One more time, a Muslim world began to focus on religious aspect of Palestine. That's why Kudus, that's why Aqsa Mosque became the central focus of this conflict. So the problem of this narrative, the problem of this frame is, we basically see no consistent responses from Arab countries, from Muslim countries, from European countries, from Asian countries. But remember, in 1950, 1960, in other parts of the world, we do have consistent responses. If you think about 1950 anti-colonial movement, it's almost like a global movement from the United States to Africa to Asia. All countries basically support anti-colonial movement. But why not in Palestine? As I mentioned, basically because of the Cold War, basically because of Palestine-Israeli war, our Arab-Israeli war, basically because at this time we began to use religion, we began to talk about ethnicity. So that's why we do not really have consistent, coherent international responses. At this time, the latest conflict in Palestine, I would say we cannot forget, first of all, this is the colonialism. Uh, this is a anti-colonial movement, simply because as we all know, from Israeli occupation now to Israeli eviction of Palestinians in Eastern Jerusalem. So that's why we also see the Hamas resistance. And of course, when people talk about Hamas, try to use a religious term, you know, Islamic resistance movement. And my question is why you highlight Islamic? This is a common resistance against the colonialism, right? If you compare to 1950, 1960, you have almost everywhere. I'm the struggle, I'm the rebellion against the colonial power. So now in Palestine, you basically have the same issue. But the problem is since uh, 1970s, as I said, 1960 to 1970s, because most countries already achieved independence. So that's why in Palestine, armed rebellion against the colonial uh, rule is basically regarded as outdated. So that's why if you look at European countries, some of the Asian countries, when they achieved independence, they basically discourage Hamas, discourage Palestinian people now to use armed rebellion, try to solve the issue through a legal approach. So that's why if you look at in the latest you know, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, yeah. uh, the international responses, as I said, uh, it's really diverse, but at the same time, we see some consistency. For example, if you look at Europe, European unions, especially if you look at Ireland, uh, basically they condemn Israeli occupation, Israeli expansion. Well, Terma, if you look this at is a China, reminder that uh, yes. you are, have another three minutes. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. China basically condemned the U.S. backing. If you look at the U.S., you also have social demonstrations, protests, even with the Democrat, uh, Democratic Party, you have, you know, division against the Biden's policy. So that's why I said, if you look at this time, we really should reframe Palestinian issue in terms of colonial issue, colonial movement. And also we should solve this issue through a legal issue. Because if you remember yes. from 1948, you have a state of Israel, 1948, you have a state of Israel. Now all the time you have process of Palestinian state, basically from 1974 to almost 1988 to 1993 to 2012, you see the process of Palestinian state information. 
So now, of course, we basically try to what? De-ethnalize the Palestinian issue. De-religionize the uh, Palestinian issue. Uh, this is not simply a Muslim Christian, I mean, Jewish issue. This is also about Christians and other ethnic minorities who used to live in Palestine. This is not simply Arab Palestinian or Arab Jewish issue. This is a part of global issue. As I said, it's a continuous anti-colonial movement. So that's why I said, if we have this consistent framing, if we have this continued legal approach, now I think we can mobilize the whole world, not only Middle East, Arab, Muslim country, but also from Europe to Asia, to America, uh, from NGO, from different uh, uh, background, from different sectors, so that the Palestinian issues definitely will be solved because this is a colonial issue, not simply a religious, ethnic, or Middle Eastern issue. So that's why I really don't like people to use in a religious term to frame, ethnic term to frame. Of course, Palestine, Palestine is the land of profit, but we cannot monopolize the profit, right? So yeah. that's why at this time, we really think this is a colonial issue. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ma. Thank you very much for your uh, extensive uh, informations. And also you are uh, trying again to remind us about how the components of uh, history is also playing important parts of, of, of Palestinian issues. So this is, uh, you know, there's a shift. Uh, you mentioned about a shift, the shift of narratives. Uh, and then I think uh, Dr. Ma uh, tries to respond what the previous speaker mentions about, okay, we need collective efforts. It should be practical work rather than uh, rhetoricals rhetoric uh, works. However, uh, changing narratives, Dr. Ma underlined that changing narrative is becoming one of the challenges uh, that is making the efforts in consistency and not current responses that actually that's what the Palestinian people need in order to solve uh, the problems and get them the independence. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we are coming to our last uh, 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 presenters or speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Eight, uh, uh, our eighth speaker is Dr. Seh Muhammad Altafur Rahman from Thailand. So, uh, before proceeding to to uh, his presentations, again, I would like to uh, let you know. Please post your questions uh, because after this, we're going to come to question and answer sessions. Uh, mention the speaker that you wish to answer your question and also mention the country you are from. So we know the aspirations from, from the countries that we are uh, talking about. So uh, Dr. Seh Mohammed al Tafur Rahman or Dr. Rahman is a faculty member at the School of Global Studies in Tamasat, Tamasat University in Bangkok and Thailand. He has his doctoral degree in human rights and peace studies, along with a master's in law and master's in human rights and social development. So prior to his academic career, Dr. Rahman served with several international development and human rights organizations for 15 years across Asia and Pacific. Dr. Rahman's research area includes human security implementations, human rights mechanism, democratizations, interfaith discourse, and global transitions. Dr. Rahman, so the time is yours. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For inviting this uh, program, uh, and I'm glad to share some of my thought on on the issue. And it is always challenging to speak at the end after seven distinguished speaker uh, you know mentioned their points. So let me see. I have prepared something very hefty, very quickly. So maybe I haven't done enough justice on the forum, but but let me share whatever I have thought of. Uh, so I think my time is eight minutes, right? The moderator, my time is eight minutes. Right? Uh, ten, sir. Ten. You have ten minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So sure. shukran. So I am trying to speak about uh, the Palestine issue, even and basically focusing on the post ceasefire uh, situation and how the international response could be. Next slide, please. Uh, so what I am trying to focus is basically five different points. The first point is we want to understand about post ceasefire states. So what is exactly that means for us? Second, we want to understand about the occupation and we want to see some sort of structural analysis of the occupation. We want to know about the feasibility of the responses that we have been mentioning. 
and glad that a lot of other responses actually introduced in this forum. So we need to see whether those are feasible enough and not, and why we, we can do that and why not. We want to see some of the gaps in the step that we want to take and what kind of step that we can actually take. And finally, the pragmatic orientation, meaning what exactly we can do even within this small forum that we have here. So you can name it as a non-state actor, you can name it as a forum, you can name it as a initiative, but something that can come out feasibly, practically, and, and real. Next slide, please. Yep. So first thing is, we are talking about a ceasefire, which is after 11 days of fight. This is not new. We have been seeing repeatedly fire, fighting, and ceasefire. The only new thing here is the timing of this ceasefire is very different. It is not very long like before. And what does that mean? That means a lot to us because the fight was not continued as long as it was earlier. That means something has changed. That's the first thing we know. The second thing we know though, in the number and proportion of casualties in both sides is also very different. So if we look at the Al Jazeera sponsored list, we can see from 2008, 2012 and 2014, the proportion of casualty is very different in this time. So something has changed here as well. Uh, what we have seen here as well is that Although uh, the ceasefire, the fighting was very short, but some way the difference was relatively different than before. So what is the difference? We can see that the uh, military wise, if we analyze the situation, there was a different capacity among uh, the Palestine population in terms of the resistance movement by launching different range of uh, you know, missile system, which is able to reach as far as the border of, uh, you know, the other border of a Israeli state. So what we can see here is that the significant difference in terms of capability of resistance movement, and that is something very important. Uh, number three, and that is interesting as well, the world has responded very differently this time. We have seen the different movements are responding across the world, but the response of the international media has nothing changed significantly than before. Al Jazeera is the only exception. But if you look at the responses of CNN, Fox, and, and all the AP and any other major international media house, their terminology they are using is bias and unjust terminology they are using in their reporting system. So th things like that. When the death, the casualties are being reported is saying that Palestine population are dead, they're dead but Israeli are killed. The term death and killed has a different kind of connotation of criminal responsibility. So what we can see that the media has been reporting same, but what is changed now? The change was the people's response. We have seen across the world, there are subtle range of solidarity movement campaign and all the rallies those that took place that make a significant change in terms of world opinion. Mm -hmm. Number four, Something was not right within Israel. And that is a very interesting thing as well. We know that it was a cash uh, bet by Netanyahu for his uh, power protection and uh, repeatedly fall in, in terms of for, you know, creating the government or forming the government in Israel. So trying to get the you know, vote bank or support from the conservative part of the Israeli population. But interestingly, we have also seen the movement that generated within the Arab Israeli population and the resistance of the moderate Israeli population and the hardliner. And that is something interesting, which was not before that much. We have seen the Israeli government has to put, uh, you know, curfew in their own cities. And, and they have been fighting in different front. So these changes are new and we need to understand these changes to understand the whole scenario of ceasefire and the post ceasefire situation. Next slide, please. Okay, now when you're talking about the post ceasefire stages. Uh, let me just congratulate our brothers and sisters who have been fighting on the ground and who are representing not only the humanity, but also Islam in particular, I have to say. Um, and and they, they are fighting bravely. And, and we have to say, we, we need to congratulate them. And, and we have to pray for the martyrs who have uh, led their, I know, arm, uh, led their lives. But we're saying that we, we also need to understand post ceasefire situation has two different dynamics. One is there is the immediate need 
And there's a lot of discussion has going on about the immediate need, what you can do about the rehabilitation, reconstruction, what you can do to support not only the education system, but the livelihood option for the Palestinian population. We can note a very state, you know, statement by a young adult Palestine who said, my dream is to see the mountain because there in Gaza, there's no mountain. And he says very sadly, but I, cannot I, can, I can never go to a mountain because they're in jail. We're talking about the biggest jail in the world, yeah? So the solution versus the immediate need, that's to come together. We cannot really separate these two together. Yeah? So when you're talking about the medical support and psycho psychological support of the population, the victims and, and the traumatized population, we also need to think about the rehabilitation and reconstruction. So maybe things like donation, charity, and things like that need to be strengthened. What international community has committed how, how they have realized their commitment or not. Is there any tracking system, any monitoring or any report on the basis of their commitment and what has been realized is nothing there. So we Dr. Need... Dr. Rahman, uh, you still have two minutes remaining. Please go oh. ahead. Okay, so we need to be really concentrated in this policy and see how that can be done. We need to think about end of the biggest prison in the world and how we can establish the justice system. So probably issues like bringing the perpetrator to ICC, ICC or issues like how you can talk about right to self-defense, who will be getting the right to self-defense. So there's a two different issue here. Uh, we are talking about the you know, Israeli politics inside and positioning the Israel, uh, positioning the Palestine in the Middle Eastern situation. So next slide, please. Okay. I think I will, I will just skip this part uh, just to mention the time is limited, but, uh, but we need to understand about the uh, you know, psychological dimension of the, of the crisis in Palestine. It is not a crisis, a physical crisis. It has a psychological aspect to that, which is a colonial legacy. So in terms of the response, if we can cluster it into political, military, and solidarity response, there is only one way to move forward, which is two-state solution. But is it a practical solution? Are we talking about is a realistic solution? How we can strengthen the OIC or change the political dynamics within the US politician? And we know that within the young population of US, there is a growing support for the solidarity of the population and human rights situation in the Israel-Palestine conflict. When you're talking about the military support, how we are talking the, you know, reaching out to the Palestinian population through the military support, like the Gaza is limited by, by the blockade itself. So is it possible to reach out militarily the Gaza population? When you're talking about the economic support, the idea of global solidarity need to be versatile, meaning that non-Muslim population need to be included in the solidarity process, not just the Muslim audience, because non-Muslim audience are very important. Next slide, please. But there are gaps in, in, this, in this situation. There's a gaps in information war. The, the world information system is predominantly dominated by the, uh, the Zionist and capitalist bloc. So how we can come up with the humanistic approach in the, in the you know, information sharing, like strengthening the social media or non-informal non media sector, or how we can create a narratives. So creating a kind of a scholar's understanding and new narrative is very important. So probably more research, more uh, you know, scholarly activity is vital. And finally, I think it's, it's also important to understand the psychological and physical aspect of the conflict. So if we need to uh, work, we need to work in the both field of psychological and physical aspect. Maybe my the last slide. Okay, there are some sort of pragmatic orientation is there, like the preparing ourselves, um, you know, try to bring the perpetrator under the criminal justice system. So maybe Netanyahu in ICC, why, why we, are not, we, we are not thinking about that, we develop the kind of cases necessary to bring them, or war crime that's been committed in Gaza or in you know, greater Palestine, or the right to self-determination, and how we can make these cases. So those are very important things. Strengthening the information and strategic direction system is another vital thing. And one more important thing, I think, when you talk about the UN soldier or peacekeeping uh, you know, initiative in Israel and Palestine, this is not going to happen because you know, we know that you know, ideally UN Security Council is not going to pass the UN peacekeeper. But we can talk about the international monitor who can physically be there you know, year the round and they can come up with their report so that it will be a clearly pressure, but we don't need to go to throw the UN Security Council. We can go through UN General uh, Assembly and deploy the monitor, peace monitor in the, in the ground. And that could be a very important uh, you know, immediate solution uh, to, 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 to take. 
And then finally, the effective common position of Muslim nation is very vital. If OIC cannot do that, how we can really push OIC to come forward and create a common position? And that's something we need to do. Thank you very much. I think the time is not really uh, allowing us to go more detailed discussion, but that's pretty much the summary I, I can share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rahman. I think you have been speaking so speedy because you have a lot of things to say, but the time is not uh, in our hands right now. But thank you so much. We have noticed some of your important points. You're talking about ceasefire. The ceasefire actually is nothing new. So uh, Palestinian people now uh, uh, responding in a different way. And, and you're also talking about uh, the condition in, in, in Israel. That is now, is, is again, it's about politics, uh, back to the politics. But uh, your important points also is about how more concrete actions like the justice system, the ICC, the International Criminal Court, and also the, the, how, how to take the preparators to, to the justice. So uh, some, some other things also uh, that we have been uh, seeing so far. So uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, uh, distinguished speakers, now uh, we come to the question and answer sessions. But uh, uh, to be honest with you now, this is already almost two minutes before uh, uh, three o'clock PM in Jakarta time. So actually we only have two minutes remaining if in our predefined time. So I, I'm, I'm seeking your, because we have a lot of question here, but, but, but I'm thinking of picking up only two of them, two of them because, because it's, it's, uh, we, we don't have luxury of time. So, but before that I need your I need your agreement whether it is okay for us to proceed to another 10 minutes to have the questions uh, and in closing session before we end up. Is it okay? okay. Uh, it's okay with me. Is it okay, everyone, uh, the distinguished yes. speakers? Sure. Okay. All right. So so then we yep. will have three questions then, uh, mm -hmm. but the, each question should be answered maximum in three minutes. Okay, in three minutes. So let me uh, have what we have here. Actually, we have a lot of questions, but um, my apologies is uh, we are only able to pick three of them. So the first question is, uh, I mean, is for Dr. Samala. So there's a question. Uh, would you think that any efforts towards establishing permanent peace would require the inclusions of the American, European Union, Russia, as they have ability to influence the Israel regime. Dr. Samala, please answer the questions in three minutes maximum. Yes. Actually, uh, the Palestinians have uh, a very long experience with the Israeli peace meaning. The Israeli peace meaning is just to confiscate more land, to uh, kill more people, to put more people in a prison, to declare Al-Quds as a uh, united capital, then you impose all unhuman uh, things against the Palestinian. You continue as the Israeli to continue Judaize the Beitul Maqdis and then said the Palestinian, the good Palestinian, the one who, who, who is silent or dead. Uh, this is the, the meaning of peace uh, for Israel. For the international community, it it, it is always come and go to speak about peace, 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 but it, it become meaningless. Nothing, nothing means peace. The only, the only uh, language Israel understand how to force it to respect the human rights and the, the rights of the Palestinian people. As example, it is 70 years uh, since the occupation, how many Palestinians return to their homelands zero how many uh, how many make how many uh, square meter of the land israel gave the palestinian zero even when when israel uh, draft the uh, so called deal of century which announced by trump we believe it is not a trump uh, plan it is an israeli plan but announced by trump when they announce when they draft the peace, they called peace, uh, new peace uh, era, is deal of the century. They prevented the Palestinian people from the port, from the airport, from uh, unity land, from uh, all things. And they create uh, islands. They, they make islands. And then they said it will be your Palestine, the new Palestine. Even 
the Baytul Maqdis and Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak, they wanted to confiscate the right. sovereignty over this holy place for not the Palestinians. It is for the Muslim Ummah. So they don't understand anything. All, all previous experience is bad with the Israeli. Uh, and some um, part of the Palestinian already involved in peace right. agreement since 1993, and they create create PA, Palestinian Authority. And unfortunately, the Palestinian Authority now became a chief police for the Israeli. They use it, not cooperate with the Palestinian Authority. So I believe the reaction of the Palestinian in, in the last round of struggle with the Israeli Zionists uh, declared the answer that Israel doesn't understand or respect any peace agreement even with the holy places, even with worshippers, worshippers. I am Palestinian, I am Palestinian. I didn't enjoy my right to visit right. Masjid al-Aqsa or to travel right. to any place. This is the, the peace they want. So we as Palestinian now don't trust right. in these uh, vocal uh, offers. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Samala. Thank you for for questions, uh, for the answers that you you have made very clear, very clear answers for the questions. And uh, the second questions is coming from Indonesia, uh, and then the questions goes to Dr. Ma. So the question is: Do you believe President Biden will bring the Palestinian-Israeli conflict to an end? What does Biden has to offer in making a Palestinian state an independent? Uh, Dr. Ma, please. Well, this is a really tough question. Uh, <laughs> as you know, there's a huge debate in the U.S. now. Uh, people basically say two-state solution is that. Some people say, well, two-state solution is the only solution. So that's why it seems to me Biden now at least uh, virtually they try to highlight two-state is the only solution now. So that's why if you say Blinken visit Palestine and also Israel. So I think this is actually a friendly gesture because Biden and Blinken for the first time, they said Palestinians, Israelis, they should have equal rights. And also if you look at American society, you have Black Lives Matter, you have other social movement, equal rights movement, now people began to link American equal rights movement to Palestine. So that's why you really have kind of global movement in which United States actually is part of. And the third reason is you have rising China as a part of so-called great power competition. China openly accused the United States of harbor the Israel. So that's why you can imagine for all this domestic great power competition, United States, I think nowadays, is obliged to make some deal uh, with Israel and Palestine. But we really don't know what's the final you know, solution, what's the final outlook of this solution. But definitely, I think United States now is really obliged to do so. All right. All right, Dr. Ma, thank you very much. So a very simple but really clear answers that you have made. And uh, uh, I hope it, it answered all the questions that, that, that uh, the, the, the audience wants to ask from Indonesia. And, and the last question is someone from our audience, our distinguished audience from Singapore. And the question goes to Dr. Nasaruddin Isa. Uh, we certainly need a non-state actor to be involved. This is a great time for the setting up of United Front on a concerted social media platform to educate the citizens of the world. So this is about the social media platform. Uh, the question is, uh, I mean, uh, the audience believes that social media platforms should be utilized effectively for this. What is Dato's views on this, please? Uh, yeah, please, exactly. Uh, uh, the uh, yeah. engagement on multiple fronts is very much needed now, uh, especially in the social media and uh, the use of social media. Um, you know, if we uh, realize uh, of late has indicated that uh, a rising change of narrative from the usual pro-Israel stance have shifted into a more, uh, you know, sentiments toward the Palestine. Well, as we all know, and this is also mentioned by Dr. Ma just now, that social media is an a agent of change. We can force uh, traditional media. Uh, hashtag 
Black Lives Matter now is you know uh, globally accepted. So that kind of movement should be used uh, to create a more significant shift of uh, uh, alignment. Yeah? Engagement on examples such as uh, hashtag Palestine Lives Matter, hashtag and Israeli appetite uh, is required uh, doctor, in, uh, in, 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 in promoting uh, the agenda through the social media. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of the you know, weapons uh, that we can use uh, as for now in promoting uh, awareness among, among the public um, from right from this end of the world to the other end of the world in creating a, a more uh, sensitive and a more, um, uh, what could I say, a, a more concern about the whole situation in, in, in Palestine uh, to look at it not just from a perspective, but like what I mentioned just now, not just from the perspective of religion, but also from the from other perspective, uh, for example, uh, a continuous effort in, in the political uh, uh, engagement in, in in the in the legal international uh, legal engagements. It was suggested just now, you know, if we could bring Netanyahu to the to the ICC, for example, if we could, uh, you know, create a force uh, to bring Israel to the UPR process, for example, in Geneva, that would be uh, next step forward that I could. Uh, uh, suggest uh, by using social media in promoting it. Thank you. All right, Dr. Nasarudisa, thank you very much for your answer. This is really uh, a, a final touch of how social media, which is now the, the, the age of the technology that we can use to, to echo what's the narratives and what the concerted efforts that we need. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished speakers, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, actually, the, the usual way how to moderate a session is taking up or making the summary. But uh, to be frank with you, I will not be able to take the summary here because, <laughs> I mean, you have all the inspiring new ways of thinking. So I don't think I need to do the summary. But if I don't do something, I think the organizing uh, committee, I will get complaint from the organizing committee. So <laughs> what I would do is just I would like to just uh, highlight some calls, important calls uh, that we have uh, uh, got this uh, international talk. So the first one, uh, we hope that this is not the only discussions that we have. It could be continued discussion on this. This could be a way of articulate the politi- uh, the articulations of politicals. This is the wave of political articulations. And this is also uh, the time for us to see uh, how the rhetoric, lesser rhetoric, but more concrete, uh, concrete actions, more to see the uh, independence of Palestine is something that is not uh, impossible. So uh, this is probably the calls that we're going to have for for probably our continued efforts and support and also discussions in the future. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished speakers and brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank you all the speakers uh, for the informative and inspiring presentation, all the audience for the participants and questions posed in the chat box. Uh, uh, on behalf of the, the, the committee, I do apologize for not having a more possible interactive session since we do not have a luxury of time. So uh, everyone, please now join me to share gratitude to the speakers. And also for you all, the audience, by clicking the clapping hands emoticon at your Zoom. Uh, please do that. Yes. Okay. So this is just like what I'm doing right now. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and then I hope that what you have been uh, providing and saying, inshallah, will be helping us to strengthen our efforts to uh, help our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Thank you very much once again, and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thanks.